Hey folks, today we got the brand new Wahoo Kicker V6, otherwise known as Wahoo Kicker 2022, or just simply the new Kicker. Now, like most kickers last couple of years, last new versions of kickers, if you will, uh, the upgrades here are relatively modest. It's all about like kind of keeping just ahead of the Joneses, not keeping up with the Joneses, just like barely ahead of the Joneses. So this review isn't super complex. Basically, I'm going to run through the new stuff first, then I'm going to run through the existing specs just to kind of catch you all up. And then from there, we're going to talk about how to configure the new stuff, and then just general ride feel into accuracy, and we'll just wrap it up. It's going to be quick and easy. So the first item on the list is the addition of Wi-Fi. There's a new little Wi-Fi status light right there. It kicks out the uh, AMP Plus status light. AMP Plus is still there, fear not, but their logic is that AMP Plus is always on, therefore there's not a whole lot of uh, usefulness in having an always on status light, uh, though the Wi-Fi one is also always on but hey whatever uh this right next to the bluetooth one that's there and they added a bunch of warnings as well up here uh that the flywheel gets hot and not to like stick your fingers in it and stuff like that and then with that new wi-fi we get automatic firmware updates at night when you sleep or in the morning or in the afternoon it actually checks every 11 hours so if you're not pedaling it's not being actively used it connects via wi-fi checks the server and then it downloads any updates but if you are pedaling it'll say hey i'm gonna come back in 11 hours and the idea behind that is that if you do your workouts in the morning or the evening at the exact same time, then it's not going to hit you at the same time every single day. So eventually you'll find a time of the day where you're hopefully not on the kicker and grab those updates. And I think this is a really big deal, but we're going to talk about that more a little bit later on. Next, they've added a new feature they copied from Elite in their Elite Justo trainer that was announced this past summer, uh, which is the Easy Erg or Easy Ramp, Easy Erg Ramp, whatever you want to call it. Basically, it means that if your doorbell ding-dongs and there's a practice person there, you need to jump off your trainer in the middle of an Erg workout, and you come back to your trainer and start trying to ride again. If you have a smart trainer, you know that can be incredibly difficult, uh, especially if you're mid-interval. We're basically trying to go from 0 watts to, say, 400 watts or something super high up there. Um, is very, very challenging. And so what Elite added this past summer, and now Wahoo the same thing, is basically when you stop pedaling, uh, it'll ramp up the erg resistance level over the course of X number of seconds. In the case of Wahoo, it's 10 seconds that it ramps up to the pre-specified level. You can see this right here where I basically stop pedaling in the middle of this uh, erg workout, and then I go ahead and basically start pedaling again, and it ramps me back up slowly to that level again. The app is none the wiser though. The app has no idea what's going on. This is all handled like inside the kicker itself. Hey, just a quick note, by the way, if you're finding this useful or something like that, if you could hit that like button down there, it really does help with this video and the channel quite a bit. Next, the last new feature is the addition of an odometer, which may sound strange, but it's all about resale value and a little bit about support. Uh, so now you can crack open the Wahoo Kicker app on your phone or the Wahoo app on your phone, and you can look at the odometer value for this kicker itself. And it basically like standardizes onto a, a 700cc tire. So it's all kind of the same across the board. And you can see exactly how many kilometers this kicker had in its entire lifetime. That's super useful where like say two or three years from now, you might be looking at this video and want to buy someone else's Kicker 2022 and you could ask them to show you in the app how many kilometers they have in their kicker and then maybe make a judgment call on whether or not that's worth what they're offering or whatever the case is. And then the last new thing is not awesome. Uh, they've raised the price. Uh, $100 uh, increase on the US side so up to $12.99 from $11.99. $11.99 has actually been the price for the Wahoo Kicker forever, basically. And so that's the first time we've seen this price increase. Uh, I guess that's just like the 2022 thing to do. Um, also, all the other currencies on the screen right now, I'm pretty sure all of those also had price increases as well. Now, before we get into configuring the Wi-Fi and how that works, just a very quick spec uh, blow through here. None of this stuff has changed. So they have the existing kicker access feet. These are little kind of like barely squishy feet here that just give it the tiny, tiny, idiot, bittiest, almost really not there bit of movement. Uh, they're still here. They're the same as before. Still there, so it's kind of neat. Uh, it also retains the Wahoo Direct Connect port on the back. So that's the non-Ethernet port that you can buy an adapter for a hundred bucks, plug it in there, and then have an Ethernet port. I think most people with Wi-Fi now are probably not going to use that, but uh, if you really do need to go wired, that's still an option. It's still back there. Next, there's still the zero calibration a feature you had on the Kicker V5. So basically, it's automatically calibrating behind the scenes. You can't really override it. That's done mostly from like an eSports racing standpoint so that you can't fake the calibration values and dork with it and stuff like that. Uh, it has a power accuracy claim of plus or minus 1%. Uh, it has dual AMP plus and Bluetooth smart uh, and actually try concurrent Bluetooth smart. So three concurrent Bluetooth smart channels at once can be connected to this and unlimited AMP plus channels. All that's the same as a past. Uh, it comes with an 11 speed uh, cassette built into it, but it is compatible with 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12 speed cassettes. Uh, and for the 12 speed, you need an XD or XDR adapter as well. Maximum incline of 20%. You don't want to do that. Just 
we don't. Uh, maximum resistance of wattage at 2200 watts. And it's got a built-in handle. Uh, I just figured I'd mention that because some trainers don't, and it's super useful if you had to move this thing a fair bit. This is still warm with my workout. <laughs> nice. Um, and then last but not least, it needs to be plugged in in order to use it, in order to transmit power and that kind of goodness. So with that all set, uh, the first thing you need to do is take your trainer, throw it on the ground, and splay open the legs. You got these little locking pins right there. This keeps the legs either locked in or opened up. Uh, you can also adjust the height right here. Uh, you can see it's got basically different uh, levels of height there. You'll probably forget this, and then realize it like a month or a year later to do this. Uh, it's not a big deal, it's purely like a, a fit sort of thing. After that, you're gonna plug it in, and then from there, you're gonna crack open the Wahoo Fitness app on your phone. At that point, you'll add a new sensor, in which case that is a kicker, uh, and it's probably gonna offer you a firmware update, but it takes like two to three minutes. Go ahead and do that. And then from there, you'll see the option to go ahead and connect to a Wi-Fi network. Uh, now, this supports 2.4 gig Wi-Fi, not 5 gig Wi-Fi. Uh, that sounds like that's mostly a chipset availability issue. Uh, Wahoo says that they have put this through the test. They've actually tested microwaves directly next to it while people are riding on trainers, uh, and there's been no dropouts. So hopefully that holds true for everyone else. Uh, so far in my testing, it has. In fact, I actually saw AMP Plus dropouts uh, due to Wi-Fi interference or some sort of uh, wireless interference here, where I did not see that on the Wi-Fi side. I was like, dually recording, and so that was kind of cool. Anyways, you'll connect up to your Wi-Fi network. It takes like two seconds, it validates the connection, and then you're done. At this point, you can crack open the app of your choice. And the easiest way to show this to you is actually Zwift's app. It's not Wahoo's app because Wahoo's app doesn't show these icons properly. But in Zwift's app, they mostly do. And so what's neat about this is that's using the existing direct connector, DuraCon connection, uh, that you had on the kicker from almost two years ago now. So any app that supported Wahoo Direct Connect from almost two years ago automatically supports the Wi-Fi side of it, which is awesome. So in this case, I cracked open Zwift and it immediately saw the kicker on my network. It shows an ethernet dongle plug port thing, but hey, that's fine. It's still Wi-Fi, whatever. It works fine for me. And then the same thing for the smart trainer as well as the cadence. Uh, for the heart rate strap, there's no rebroadcasting. That's something I kind of hope we might see, but it didn't happen. Uh, in any case, I just paired up another heart rate strap and that was good to go. And remember, what's cool about this on Apple TV is now this does not take up your Bluetooth smart connections. Uh, so Apple TV famously has a two Bluetooth smart concurrent limit connection, uh, three if you include the remote. So this means that you could not have had steering if you had all this stuff plus heart rate. Uh, so this basically removes all this stuff off the Bluetooth smart side and just use Wi-Fi. And this is Apple TV that you're looking at right there. Now the same thing worked as well on Trainer Road. I connected up immediately. I could see the Durcon item listed there next to the Bluetooth smart one. This is on the iPad in this case. Uh, and I had no problems with that there. I then did also the same in Wahoo system, connecting it into it as well, except that was actually kind of funky. It saw like Wi-Fi, it saw this as a new kicker and all that kind of goodness, but it still like forced me over to Bluetooth Smart. And I frankly, like I think most of you just didn't have enough time today to like sit there and troubleshoot why this wasn't working like it should. Um, but obviously I'm sure this app supports Duracon correctly, but for whatever reason, it has the worst possible Durcon slash Wi-Fi interface out of all the apps, despite being Wahoo's own app. Um, but in any case, I used a Bluetooth smart and I had no problems with the trainer. So <laughs> there's that for you. Now, as far as the usage side of it, uh, it's the exact same kicker as 2020 in terms of like uh, flywheel and road feel and all that kind of stuff, which is also, by the way, the exact same kicker as 2018. Nothing's changed like in the road feel-ish type department here uh, since then. For example, noise is the same. There is no noise. Only noise you're gonna hear is your drivetrain. Here's a little snippet of that. The only sound you hear right now is from the drivetrain itself. And then things like acceleration, deceleration, all feels just like the past. And as I've said many, many times before, um, you can't take away the fact that I'm still staring at a wall or a TV screen, but a wall behind it. I know I'm indoors, but the road feel here is good. And I think, you know, for most people, uh, it is in the same league as a Tax Neo series, a Wahoo Kicker, the Lee Justo. They're all like in that same ballpark and you're kind of down to like, almost personal political preferences as to which particular unit you choose. I'm willing to bet if I were to blindfold most bike reviewers out there, most tech reviewers out there, uh, they probably couldn't tell the difference uh, if I didn't tell them what trainer they're on. And so, so in this case, I'm totally happy with the ride feel here. Uh, in terms of the access feed, as I mentioned earlier, and I mentioned two years ago when they came out, they add virtually nothing to the picture. Um, you know, especially if you have this on a trainer mat, even Wahoo admitted at the time that if you put this on a trainer mat, you're not gonna really get anything more from the access feed. If you have it on straight concrete, like on a garage floor or something like that, you might get that like millimeter or 
to at most of depression. Uh, not like you're depressed, but like depressing, uh, but you get the point. So the idea here is that you add a little bit of movement. Uh, ultimately, I sort of hope we might see Wahoo do more in this realm. Uh, Elite added kind of their own take on the, their kicker access feat in Elite Justo, and it was a better implementation. It had more give to it uh, than this does, but uh, I guess you're, if you want that give, you're gonna have to go towards a rocket plate or some sort of uh, platform like that. So that leaves us with accuracy. And now two years ago when the Kicker V5 came out, the Kicker 2020, uh, it had a rough go for the first like six months of accuracy. It was not at all accurate in some certain scenarios. And so I was really keen to see, put this through a bunch of different scenarios and find out if it was accurate on the first go. And let's go over to the computer for that. Okay, so diving right into it here, we got Trainer Road doing much a 30 by 30. So going from about 160 watts to 450 watts uh, over and over again. It's doing about 2.5 seconds, which is spot on where I want to see it. And the accuracy is very, very good. You see that purple line, by the way? That is the Shimano power meter. Just doing the Shimano power meter thing. Uh, that's just what it does. But the kicker is accurate. Next up, we've got a Zwift structure workout compared to a Quark D0 and a pair of Favero Asioma pedals. Spot on across the board here. Really, really happy. Notice a little blip around two thirds of the way through. That's actually the amp plus side dropping out on the kicker, uh, but the Wi-Fi side connected to Zwift stays spot on. Uh, a little bit of overage from the quark here on some of these spikes, but uh, not too different in the grand scheme of things. And then we got a Wahoo system workout. Now you notice it's a little more wobbly. This is because in this case, I forgot to go from my big ring in the front down to the small ring. And doing so is best practice for erg workouts across almost every single trainer. It just gives the trainer more control and more stability. Still, from a power accuracy standpoint, things are spot on. And interestingly, that kind of makes me assume that there's issues with the small ring in the Shimano power meter because it was really bad on the small ring earlier, but actually really good here on the big ring. And then finally, a Zwift kind of just a regular ride. In this case, with a pacer group. So you're seeing a lot of fluctuations there, but all these power meters are really, really tightly together. And this is across a bunch of different train and gradients uh, as well as shifting. So overall, this section is quick and efficient because the unit is spot on accurate. Okay, so let's wrap things up. Uh, at this point, this is a modest upgrade, at least like in theory, but I think in reality, like if in viewed in the long-term lens of indoor smart trainers, this is gonna be kind of a pivotal turning point, uh, primarily because of the Wi-Fi side of things. In terms of like the actual ride experience of this, it's the same as it's been for the last like four to five years. I know like Ceres has got some heat over the last week or two with the release of the new Ceres H4 for basically just being the same trainer they released over the past, you know, four or five years. But this is kind of the same thing too. The difference though, is that Wahoo's been making these little tiny internal changes that just kind of keep on like moving it ahead just slightly. It's kind of like Apple with their Apple Watch displays. Like they keep just implementing a little bit higher up specs each time, things you didn't really ask for, but you've got them and that keeps them just ahead of the competition. It's the same sort of thing here. The addition of Wi-Fi is something that while well, I've been asking for, most people haven't, but now that it's here, it's just so much easier. It just connects, I don't have to worry about it. Everything is good to go. It's always on, the firmware will always be updated. I think this is kind of a big deal, even if it just seems like a, a minor thing. Overall though, this is a solid option. I think, you know, it, it retains its title in that top tier of trainers uh, and kind of the very top edge of that top tier. Uh, that top tier primarily being the Wahoo Kicker, the Tax Neo uh, series, the Elite Justo now, and then somewhat previously, and I think kind of towards the bottom of that tier there uh, would be the Ceres H4, just because it lacks some of those additional features, but it is of course 300 bucks cheaper. So I think that's Ceres acknowledging that, uh, but there's still plenty of great reasons why you might choose that trainer. And of course, equally plenty of great reasons why you would spend 300 bucks more to get this trainer. Uh, maybe at some point in the next couple weeks, I'll do like a complete showdown. Uh, we'll see if anything else changes in that landscape between now and then. With that, do not forget to hit that subscribe button at the bottom there. Uh, this is without question going to be the busiest week on this channel in the history of ever. Uh, and so you're not going to want to miss it. Have a good one.